Hey, what's your problem? You have business problems? We have business solutions. Sometimes. Well, maybe. Yeah. Life is a fight. In business, every day is a fight. So, hey, what's your problem? Yes, thank you, John David Wells, as usual, from the Wells Report. He's the big voice guy for this podcast. Love that guy. I gotta, I gotta reunite with him at some point. Let me lower this music down. It's blaring. Why is the heavy metal so loud? Heavy metal. Yes, this is the What's Your Problem podcast coming to you from Thompson Station, Tennessee, from the J2HQ. It is a podcast for business owners and professionals that always have that one thing that keeps them up at night. It's always something, and that's what we kind of discuss. Amongst other things, eventually the question comes up of what your problem is. This is a video and audio podcast. Check us out at whatsyourproblempodcast.com and, uh, you know, follow along, share it out, let other people know about it. You know, we want to grow it. We don't want to shrink it. We're growers, not showers. I'm not even sure if that applies, but, you know, I just, I say things. I am your host, Jim McCarthy with JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. And today, the master of sleep in Middle Tennessee. Dr. Bajoy John is joining me today. Another B and I, or sir, how are you? Good, fine, thank you, Jim. Thanks uh, for having me on. The awesome, show. and uh, you are the master of. Uh, you, I, I believe you've helped me. You've put me on a CPAP at some point, and it's uh, it's it's been a wonderful curse. <laughs> 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 Blessing and a curse, right? In, in a way, I yes. mean, it's not it's not horrible. It's it's one of those things that uh, I understand the necessity for it, and it puts my wife's mind at ease because as long as we've been married, uh, uh, she would lay awake and just listen to me not breathing and struggling for air and stuff like that. And my my father, you know, my father was the same way, a snorer, and I think he had sleep apnea and all that fun stuff. And uh, hey, if it adds years to my life, why not? You know, it's, it's the insurance policy for you at night. We have all the insurance policies during the day. That's the policy for you at night to keep you, oh, right, keep you alive. And uh, you know, considering the fact that my body's not struggling to stay alive, uh, it's it doesn't burn as many calories. So okay. there's the uh, the result of that, which I have to work on. Yes. But with that being said, of course, with every show, we always start off with this: the random five with a new sponsor. <laughs> Go figure. It's your show.co. It might be a company that I'm familiar with that produces podcasts, much like this one that I try to emulate and be a good practitioner on and talk about podcasts and podcasting. If you or someone you know are looking for a way to get micro content generated and have a, you need a good source for it, podcasts are absolutely wonderful. They are marketing machines. Not only do you get the episode that can go out so people can listen to it long form, you can snip out the little sample, the bite-sized samples of what you're doing to put it out on all the socials as, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 60 second samples. Check us out, itsyourshow.co. All right. Here we go. Are you ready? Yes. What's something that I don't know? Question number one. I don't know that I don't know. What's something that I don't know? <laughs> where where do we begin? There's a lot of things that I don't know. I don't know where how it'll be in, to be in space, really. You get some of the uh, to, yeah, we'll be in space. That's for sure. Yes. All right, that was a weird question. Yes. Number two, we'll go on. What profession doesn't get enough credit or respect? I would say the sleep profession. Exactly, sleep you doesn't uh, hurt, you know, or doesn't kill you straight away. So patients. Uh, and everyone takes it for granted, and they don't come and get help. If you have a toothache, you go see the dentist right away. And yeah. if you have a mole or something that's growing, you see a doctor to take that out. So as long as it doesn't hurt, nobody cares. Question number three, yes. what memory of yours feels real, but is most likely false? Flying out of an airplane without a parachute. Oh, that's like the dreams of when you're <laughs> falling. Right? That's right. And then just before you hit the ground, you wake up. wake up. Oh, that's a common dream. Yes. And it's funny because apparently if you do hit the ground, it means that you're not waking up. Right. That's what I've always heard. Not that anybody's actually come. I don't know how somebody would know that. Because if, if you, you know, had a dream like that and you didn't wake up, how would you be able to tell people that you're dreaming about that? 
So, I mean, that's what I've heard. Go figure. Question number four. What's the most annoying thing about the social media platform you used most often? Which one do you use most often? I'm on uh, Facebook. Facebook? The annoying part is they get all your information. We are research projects for them. Well, pretty much. Yes. You're not wrong there. Yeah. Question number five, the final question. Okay. What nicknames do you have for people in your life? <laughs> the nickname I have for my daughter is, uh, I call her Big Boss Woman. Big Boss Woman? Yes. How old is she? She's 21. She Makes tells, sense. She tells me what to do. Really? And everybody else around her. <laughs> well, there you go. The Random Five brought to you by itsyourshow.co. Please go check us out. If you're in need of a podcast, let me know. Let's talk. That's what we do here. All right, moving on. So uh, you basically, you are, are, are one of the standout BNIers, and here's why. You're funny. You really know how to make people laugh, and you don't expect that from a doctor, let alone a sleep doctor, okay? And, uh, you know, all of us in the group find that wonderful about you. I mean, you've always got to have a very off kilter type of viewpoint on what you do as a profession. Am I, is that right? That is right. Yeah. Uh, I've been in practice for over 25 years and I've done so many other things. Like my background is pulmonary and ICU, mm -hmm. saving lives and being with people at their worst. Now I'm able to take care of uh, patients uh, during eight to five and also helps them to sleep better. Sleep has a great impact on several uh, major organs. So if I can do something preventative during the day and to help them make the quality of life better. So this, practically there's not much stress in what I do. So I, I begin to enjoy what I, what I do because I'm able to talk to people who are living. But in the ICU, I never got a chance because most patients are sick on the ventilator. Yeah, in the ICU, you mm -hmm. know, typically in a dire situation. Correct. So when did you want to get into the sleep side of things? I've always been in <clears> practice, <throat> but I had other three other specialties. But my sleep practice was uh, growing. You know, I had to make a choice whether to stay in one thing or do multiple things. I thought I'll, somewhere in the line, just enjoy doing what you're really passionate about. So, now, when did you come across that realization? Uh, you know, <clears throat> as the research shows that how much important sleep is, mm -hmm. more and more data is coming. <clears throat> it's, it takes care of the heart, brain. Yeah. All no, what I mean is, how old were you when you had that realization that, man, I just want, this is what I like doing. About, I just uh, want to do this. 45. You're about 45 years old? No, you, I mean, you, you look like you're 45 now, for crying out loud. How old are you? 52. You're 52? Okay, yes. so about seven years ago. Correct. So, I mean, that was, uh, in, in, you know, it just, once you had, you zeroed and lasered in, this is what I'm good at, this is what I like. Did you find, like, all of a sudden, a whole new world that just opened up for you because you were doing what you were meant to be doing? Exactly. When you are passionate about everything fits in. Yeah. Right like the common practical purposes when you everything is related to sleep i can pretty much say most of the uh ailments that people have can be related to poor sleep yeah so and it's not your you're not hell bent on getting every living soul onto a cpap you you're actually saying hey this is a tool but it's an ends to a mean or right. a means to an end rather and you work kind of a uh, hand in hand with one of our previous guests dr kelly rice She's a, a, a what I called her the uh, the luxury dental professional. I think is what I called her. But you know, she says she called she labels it as as dentistry that changes lives. I think you called her a dental artist. Dental art, a luxury dental artist. That's right. Because as long as I've known her, and I've known her a long time, she's always had that. You know, I don't want to say bougie, but I mean just really lofty uh, luxury type of. Perception from me. That's how I viewed her. Right. You know? So she brought an, she brings another perspective of treatment of sleep apnea. It's not all CPAP. Now we have, with her help, you know, I'm able to coordinate with her. Yeah. Uh, she sells the top class oral appliance devices for sleep apnea. So right. you have CPAP, then we have oral appliance, then there's Inspire, and then there's new thing in the you know, market called Excite OSA. So we have four treatments now for sleep apnea, not just one CPAP. Do you think that... If people really dial into how their mouth works and how it's situated, where the tongue is, how far the lower jaw juts out, if it's not even or if it's even, uh, in combination with how people sleep, that 
a whole number swath of ailments could be cured. Absolutely. With just the two of you. Correct. Preventative, getting yes. on the front end of things. You yes. believe that. Exactly. The sleep, good quality sleep is a preventative mechanism. So, yeah. So there is tremendous, you know, when you have an apnea, there's tremendous change. The aim of the body is to keep you alive. Mm -hmm. So it's a fight or flight response. So that when that happens at night, there is a tremendous uh, increase in adrenaline or norepinephrine, the chemical that makes your heart go fast. So that happens at night. See, that's not typically supposed to happen. You're supposed to rest. Yeah. So all through the night, people are not resting, and this keeps on, these events happen that puts a tremendous stress on the heart, jacks up the blood sugars. And, you know, of course, good sleep is good, important for memory and low oxygen because of the apnea. Yeah. That causes brain damage, and people have, you know, memory problems and... All kind of problems. And and the people that are around you listening to you struggle, you have no idea that they're struggling listening to you struggle because right. it's stressful for them. Yes. Unless they want you to die, then they're probably cheering you on. Like, oh, yeah. He, he just went, you know, 50 seconds without breathing. Let's see if we can just put a pillow over his face for the next next time he does this. And it's kind of bad, you know, people are afraid because they want to, diagnosis of sleep apnea is complicated. They think you have to go to the lab. Now, I do exclusively all studies at home. Yeah. So that's uh, what I did. Correct. Yeah. And then, so, I mean, of course, the the diagnosis is complicated, mm -hmm. or some sometimes I do have to send in the lab. But first line is always home sleep studies. That is revolutionized. You got to find out what's going on. Correct. Yeah. And you know what? Better place <clears throat> to study your sleep quality. But at home, yeah, you know, when you're in a strange environment, people watching you don't sleep well. So. Dude, I could I could sleep anywhere. Okay. You know. You're an exception. Too. I've never had a problem falling asleep. It drives my wife nuts. Yeah. Women tend to be less, they have less quality sleep than men. That's nature is to design them that way. Why is that? Just is that kind of a funny thing? Or? No, it's not. Nature has, you know, made women a little more arousal at night just to be aware of children, whatever. Mm. They are at hyper arousal mode. So, That's a little nice, a little uh, chunk revelation right there that you no know, one ever really thinks about. It's kind of right. like when Dr. Rice, when she was on, she talked about babies having to chew uh, like a beef jerky type of sus substance. But because we think we know better than nature and what God intended, we want to give them mush and baby food. And it mm -hmm. does nothing for their jaws to build up the musculature. And, uh, you know, typically she says if you go to, you know, Eskimo type of communities, they're feeding the kids like a beef jerky, you know, at some point, so the kids can gnaw on something. That's why they like to chew on stuff, you know. I found I'm like, wow. I said, come up with, <laughs> with like a dog toy for kids that they could chew on, yeah. you know. How many times does your wife say, hey, well, did you hear the kid come to the bedroom? I'm like, I don't know. I well, no maybe idea. maybe uh -huh. a couple of times. Are you familiar with a comedian named Jim Brewer? Uh, no. Oh, my gosh. It's actually a perfect. I, I got to send it to you. He did. He did a uh, a routine. I want to say back in 2010, 2011, and it's called Clear the Air, right? And he does this whole routine on uh, being married, having kids, and and what his wife went through while uh, dealing with sleeping kids and young girls who are you know peeing the bed and a wife that doesn't get any sleep. It's hilarious. Okay. But there's one section where he talks about the wife not getting any sleep and he says, that's when Satan jumps in and takes over. <laughs> I'll take over from here. <laughs> I can only imagine their bedrooms, okay? Uh, it's a, it was, I, remind me to send it to you. Okay. You'll, you'll love it. And it'll be a good example. I, I would even use it in your next presentation feed your presentation you and i we can work together we can edit it down and you know put a two or three minute clip together okay. this way you only have to spiel for five minutes if you okay. want but what a great way to open up your presentation all right because it's so true okay you know mine's coming on october 12th so all right well, well let me know let's work on it all right you know i'll totally help you with that so what were the most extreme cases you've ever seen in sleep studies i i'm you probably don't remember mine i want to say maybe i stopped sleeping I don't know, seven to 10 times an hour or something? Yeah, there is you know, sleep apnea, but there are other conditions that not much talked about. This is called REM behavior disorder. If you want to have something dramatic, how people just wake up in this sleep and punch their spouses, usually mm -hmm. more common in men over 50. So, so they sleep and punch their spouses? Yeah, exactly. It's called REM behavior disorder. REM is a period where your body is paralyzed, but in some some people, mostly men, 
the body does not get paralyzed and they act out their dreams. Oh. So the more violent the dream is, the more violent the actions are. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, we have had several cases of is that, I mean, you're early in your 50s. Has it happened to you? Or you, you just, Not yet. Yeah. I'm, I might use that as an excuse. For <laughs> <laughs> hey, it wasn't me. It I wasn't mean, it was, me. Uh, it was this reactive REM sleep thing that I did, all right? I yes. mean, you know. But talking about sleep apnea, I've seen several. You know, you, we, we measure the apneas events per hour, the average uh, events that happen per hour. So anything over 30 is considered severe, but I've seen up to like 90, 100 events. Oh my gosh. So every t- five seconds. Every five seconds. Yes. How long, you know, and that, and they got to be stopped. They stop breathing for how long? You know, you have to be, technically you have to be over like 10 seconds, but this machine can yeah. get so fast. So. I, I feel like, it, it, for me, it's a safety blanket, even though it's the most, you know, unsexy thing I could possibly be doing. It's like, hey, baby, let me put my freaking, <laughs> she calls it my sleeping hat. Right. Everything my wife is a hat. Yes. Uh, so she she's like, you're not wearing your sleeping hat. But I, I forgot to put it on over last weekend. We got in, uh, well, we didn't get in late, but for some, I just hit the sack yeah. and I was out. Yeah. So I didn't have time to prep it and all that other stuff and put it on. And I woke up the next morning. I'm like, oh my gosh, my throat is killing me. Yeah, that's because of all the oh, vibrations snoring. of the snoring. Snoring yeah. is nothing but all the, you know, the reverberations that happen yeah. in the airway. So I'm surprised. Like even my brother, about a year and a half ago, we had to share a hotel room, and my brother is notorious. I mean, he's worse than our dad. It runs in the families. Is the oh way your jaw gosh. is made. Yeah. So, but I mean, he he snored like. Yeah, it sounded like, you know, California was falling off the earth. Wow. So, uh, and when, you know, my wife, she goes, you may want to bring something, a sleep aid to put, to knock you out while you're, I'm like, oh crap, that's right. And then, you know, we show up, I get my equipment. Sure enough, he's got a CPAP. I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay. We're both going to sleep like babies. Yeah. And we did. You might want to split a host next time. Just kidding. I don't know. I mean, it was okay. We just kind of hung out, chilled, and eventually we fell asleep and there was no snoring. That's so, good. But I mean, a lot of that, if, if people have, what's a simple way people can alleviate snoring in general? They don't have sleep apnea, but it's the snoring that's the issue. Snoring, uh, you can use, snoring starts from the nose, but 90% of the problem is in the back of the throat, you yeah. know, the tongue falls. So mm-hmm. we got to get the tongue. So start with a breathe right strip and neck pillows can help. Uh, and of course, over the counter oral devices. But then if you have an apnea and, and snoring, then you have to take care of right. the apnea. It's like infection and fever. You know, you can take care of the fever as much as, but you've got to take care of the infection. So infection meaning the apnea. Yeah. So, so I was probably knocking on death's door, I guess. Probably. Yeah. And there's this newer uh, tongue uh, device called Excito. It's a, for pe- people with just snoring. You kind of, uh, it's like a tense unit for your tongue. So the tongue falls, does not fall backward, but it stays stiff and stays forward. Right. Now, women don't have, don't typically have these issues, right? Uh, it is a, that's so a good question. Uh, typically, men are twice more prone because the way the the jaw is shaped, and of course, men tend to be a little more overweight. But that goes out no after menop- after menopause. Yeah. When women reach menopause, the estrogen which keeps everything in good order. When that goes down, things start falling. So the the men and women have the same incidence after menopause. Yeah. So. After fifty fifty five, the ratio that it's an even playing field. So much to look forward to. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, after uh, you decided to do sleep full time, because yes. you've done a myriad of uh, professions mm-hmm. in specific areas, you were in ICU and pulmonary. other areas. You were in like what? Pulmonary, uh, mm-hmm. lung, mm-hmm. and then internal medicine, and also sleep. And also sleep. So mm-hmm. sleep is what did it for you. Right. Were you always kind of struggling in business in general when you were trying to serve or spin a lot of different plates until you just... Of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, IC work is pretty intense. You know, you have to work day and nights. You know, people don't fail to get sick at two in the morning. It's, hey, it's five o'clock. Yeah, we're closed. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you have... That takes... You know, you have to be pretty intense to be doing that. You can do it for quite a bit, but I did that for about 25 years and... And, and, and like, what made you go, oh, my gosh, I'm done with this? Uh, we, we know this, the stress of the, uh, anybody working in the hospital, especially in the ICU, is tremendous. So somewhere yeah. on the line, you have to say, hey, what am I enjoying more? And 
Let me yeah. just go ahead and do it. Now, rather doing what I have to do. Now, how many kids do you have? I have two, a son and a daughter. Son and daughter. Is yeah. daughter the oldest? No, she's 21. My son's 25. Okay. They're still relatively young. Yeah. What do they do? My son is uh, in private equity consulting. He works for a comp- local company in Brentwood. And my daughter is a pre-law student. She's a final year at the University of Georgia. So she, what, what does she want to do? Go into the legal profession? Yeah, she's going to. She she scored good. pretty good, high high in the LSAT exam. So she's. Uh, That's went. another occupation that takes a special person. Yes. My goodness, my brother is a an attorney. Oh wow! And he's been doing it about as long as you've been being. Were have been a doctor. He's, you guys are the same age, actually. Yeah. So he is just you know. Not that he's hating life, but, you know, I could tell that the, it's, he's getting to that point where he's like, I just, what, what am I doing? You know, and I keep on telling him, I said, you know, do what Dr. Bijoy John does. I mean, he found his love. Yes. That's his superpower, man. Yeah. Go after your superpower, right? That's it. So how did, did you notice any discernible difference in relationship with your kids at that point when you made that decision to? Oh, well, yeah, I'm, I only work eight to five now. Yeah. I hang with them. And- yeah. Two o'clock at Broadway, I'm yeah. hanging. Now, so, is, is, the, is, is there a difference in income or you didn't care? Or was it, has it become better because of that? Of course. Uh, you know, when you work three times more harder, you, you know, your income is yeah. three times lesser. But you pay for the quality of life. Yeah. So which one do you want? That's right. the question all of us have to ask ourselves. And I only ask because you're, you're a car guy. Yes. You like cars. Yes. Uh, wh- how many different types of vehicles do you own? And what, what's your favorite? Of course, uh, my favorite is a uh, it's the Lamborghini. Lamborghini. It's, uh, you got it's a uh, Murcielago. Right? Uh, no, it's uh, Gallardo. Gallardo. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I I lost track of all the different types of cars that they made. I was a huge Countach guy. Oh, that's uh, old yeah. school. That's very old school. Yeah. And it's funny when you when you think you know what you want when you're a kid, yeah. you know. Because at 11 and 12 years old, I knew exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Uh, and then you see it in real life. You're like, oh, my gosh, this thing is no frills. It's a skateboard with an engine, pretty much. The, the Aventadors, you know, are the highest end of the Lamborghini model. Is it? Yeah. The, um, the Diablo was the uh, successor to the Countach, yeah, I they, believe. Yeah, they make certain models after a certain year. They don't make them. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Now the... The Gallardo has been replaced by Harkan. Uh, that's the right. going model now. That and the Aventador are the big ones. So did you ever, growing up, see yourself owning a Lambo? Or was it, oh, yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, that'll happen. I didn't, you know, there was a time for everything. So. Yeah. So you knew younger, early on that, yeah, that's not an issue. Yes. For me, I was like, oh, my gosh, how in the world could anybody own one of these things? Yeah, I mean, even at a young age, I, I was trying different things. So I said, finally figured out education was natural to me. I said, this is the way out. So, yeah. so. Well, your, 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 your country of origin is India, Correct. right? And you moved here when? I came here in 1994. Okay. Hmm. The, I, I got to say, a lot of people that I've met from, from your country, even like we have another person in our group, Mayor. Yeah. You guys are hilarious. Where does the con- where does the, the humor come from? Because you have exposed a lot of different things. Yeah. So you're able to see a contrast between what is and what can be, what could not be. So we've seen a lot of things before having yeah. that uh, background. Yeah. But I mean, that's it, it, I would imagine that plays into what you do. You just kind of you have a great bedside manner. Correct. And, Can't relate to people. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and that <clears throat> kids have more access to normal things kids should be doing. Right. So, you know, as everything evolves, the, the childishness goes away. Yeah. But that's what we are all created to be. Now, did you, here's a good question. When you were spinning a bunch of plates yes. and you're doing a whole bunch of different things in the yeah. medical profession before you decided to focus on what you're doing now, yes. was that an element of your personality that was uh, suppressed? Uh, that you just, you know, you just couldn't put any consciousness towards it? Does yes. it has it emerged more now since? Yeah. See, my, my big aim is to combine the East and the West. The people mm-hmm. in the East believe they figured it out. People here think they've figured it out. But I believe the, the balance is right in the middle. Mm-hmm. So I, my aim is to combine both. So my passion is to 
bring people together. So I like to give a lot of speeches. So that's what I'm doing now. Every mm-hmm. chance I get, I get in front of people. So my experiences in the medical profession and the spiritual world has helped me to speak with more conviction now and I have more time. So that's my ultimate goal that I always wanted to do. Right. So even to make this transition, I wanted to get a chance to get in front of people and to to share what I know. With a, a personal branding effort of sorts. Correct. Okay. Yes. Well, that's interesting because you're talking about in your culture, yes. and this is me speaking completely blind, sure. ignorant if you want, yeah. but my perception is that education is <clears throat> no, you're going to college. Exactly. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah. You're not, you know, you want to become an electrician? Hell no, you're going to college. You you're know? either going to be an engineer or a doctor. That's what they dream of all <laughs> Indian parents. Just back in India, <laughs> right? you either an engineer or a doctor, period. But I mean, you know, here you are. You could, you know, write stand-up comedy material. Yeah. I mean, if you ever were to bring that to the, to the surface, your parents would say, dude, you're out of your mind. That's you, true. What, what are you, you know... What are you smoking? Even even my own, my own children, you know, they he wants to do. That's the path he always wanted to do: mm-hmm. finance and bringing people together, building a team. If he was there in India, I'd be like, get out of here, go go to do, uh, go do, you know, one of those things. Even even when I started, I thought he's going to follow in my own steps. So I put yeah. him in that field. Two years down, and he's like, Dad, I can't do what you can. I have my own path. So he took a business route and said, okay. I said, Dad, I, I know enough to not to stand in the way of the children. And right. To see. You know that. Yes. So, I mean, was that always something you had uh, gr- while they were growing up? Or did did you want to get them going? But you, you, were, you recognized their self-awareness before they did. But, you know, parents will know are the best judged for the children. Yeah. Most of the time, right? Yeah. My daughter, I knew from the very young age. She, big boss woman, you know, she knew she's going to be somebody who's going to tell you what to do, right? Mm-hmm. So I knew that's the path and that's where. But my son was really, really much more brilliant. I didn't know. So fortunately, I took a test for him. This is actually a, a excellent Johnson O'Connor mm-hmm. in uh, Atlanta. They tested him in a junior year. And to this day, it's exactly what, said he was made of mm-hmm. so i think that i highly recommend it in people who, who want to know what their natural talent is to do that test do the t it said marketing small groups leader uh business writer never said engineer doctor uh, so he would have been his life would have been so unfulfilling if he had gone that path right right so some yeah as, as a parent we have we have to know i, I had to learn this to stay away from their natural gifts, but and to guide them in the, you know. Yeah, my parents were hell bent on us going to college. Uh, my brother did, and it's funny. I, I kind of he wrote something recently that recalled his experience in college. That he went to a college on uh, Long Island, didn't work out, but he ended up going to a local hometown college where we grew up, and it worked out. He graduated with a BS. Um, excuse me, <clears throat> and business administration. And he um, ended up going to law school and stuff like that. So he, yeah, dare I say, he was the golden child. Yes. When it came to Jimmy, you know, every parent-teacher conference was probably a dirge for my parents, yeah. for me, uh, because they were just waiting for the teachers to say, you know, he's, he does, he's got so much potential, and mm-hmm. he, if he would just apply himself, but he never pays attention, and he doesn't listen, and he's always daydreaming. Constant. Yes. All for, throughout, you know, all of grade school. Mm-hmm. Grade fir- 1 through 10, 11. I kind of got my, I finally got my, my sh- shuff together yeah. in uh, senior year, because they were actually taking classes that had practical applications. I took accounting in senior year. And all of a sudden I was like, Oh, I understand this. I get this. This feels like it's got real intrinsic value. Why am I learning trigonometry, algebra two and geometry and, you know, or science, biology, you know, and I can't, I, what the hell am I? I'm not, I don't want to be a chemist for God's sake. Show me how to read a profit and loss statement. I want to read out, you know, an uh, income statement. I want to see how a balance sheet works, all that stuff. I want to learn what debits and credits are. That really just made, and of course, I went to college, I'm going to be an accountant. Now, you know me. Yes. I am not an accountant, Mm -hmm. okay? That is not who I am. So even then, 
it wasn't who I was. Correct. So I had to figure out who I was. And they, my parents just didn't. I don't think they could figure me out. So, But you turned out okay. They I, finally found your talent. I'm, I'm totally fine. Yes. And nothing wrong with me whatsoever. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I, t- I tell my kids that all the time, that you know, we're not going to press upon you to go to college. Yes. If you want to go, I said, because I got news for you. First, of, first and foremost, mommy and daddy, we didn't save for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, sorry. Uh, we, we were a single income family. Uh, mom stayed home with you and made sure that you guys were taken care of. But because of that, uh, yeah, there's no college fund. You know, daddy decided to go in the radio and radio doesn't really pay all that much. But, you know, uh, we're making up for that now. And right now, the whole uh, effort is to not be a burden on you (laughs) when we're older. (laughs) I said, that's the objective. Yes. (laughs) I said, but I truly believe as long as you know that we believe in you, that you need to find out who you are. And it's okay in your 20s to fall on your face, to eat the dirt. Mm -hmm. Right. And try things. Mm -hmm. Because I can't tell you, you're gonna fit. You're not gonna honor or dishonor me by doing what I think you should be doing. Correct. So that's a good mindset. No. Yeah. So as parents, like I said, we have to encourage their strengths and to stay away from the path that God has destined them to be. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because even when I encourage, like my son, for example, yeah. unbelievable musical talent, right? Uh, played the drums. You know, maybe because I play, I'm a drummer, but I never said, hey, you're going to be a drummer. That's it, right? He he assumed that he would be letting me down if he didn't really want to pursue the drum. And he almost, you know, pushes against me and turns against me because of that. And I'm like, dude, I'm not telling you yes. to pursue the drums. I'm saying that you have a musical talent that you have not yet seen to fruition, but I see the potential in you, okay? That's all I need. Why don't you try high school band? So yeah. throughout middle school, he was in high school band or the, the band program. Hated every minute of it. So he says, um, and he's like, I'm so glad I'm out of it. And I said, I think it's going to be one of the biggest regrets of your life now that you're in high school, that you're out of band. I said, he said, why do you say that? I said, because you're the only one in the drum line dancing mm. and having a good time and is on the beat and knows how to play. You, it's just a natural talent for you. Got a good year. Yeah, and I said, you know, the 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 teacher who runs the drum line at the high school, I guess, sought him out and said, look, don't even need to have an audition. I'll, I just want you. And he's like, no. I'm, Dude, that's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, I just don't want to do it. Why not? Because, you know, he's one of those people that, hey, you're really good at this. You should really pursue that. Oh, yeah, you think so? Great, I'm going to stop. <laughs> every single we got him a piano one year mm-hmm. a keyboard for Christmas he, he begged us for it so we finally got him for it within a couple of days he had it down he was playing stuff on it and like that would take, take people, people months to, to learn. learn yeah he's picked it right up now it just sits in his closet you're good at this yeah, you think so? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're unbelievable. Keep going. Okay, I'll stop. One day he'll probably start his own band. That was an America's Got Talent. One young mm-hmm. woman was doing everything by herself. I saw that. That was a recent season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's from Nashville, too. She so. is. That's right. That's crazy. And so my wife and I are like, okay, my brother's a musician, and he says, look, you can't force it on him. Yes. You can't make him do stuff and practice and all that stuff. He's got to want to do it. He'll all come right? from within. I said, I agree. I'm a musician. I'm, I, I liked playing the drums. So it's crazy. So with that being said, I'm, I went off on a little bit of a tangent here. What's your problem? Dr. Bajoy John. What problem are you having these days? What can we talk about? What is that, Jim? What was the question? What is your problem? What, do you, what, do you, what is the one thing you're dealing with these days? Hey, there's uh, people snoring and... <laughs> People not getting enough sleep. Or sleep. Only two problems I deal with. Either people sleep too much or they can't sleep. Which one do you have? Well, I, one thing that you said earlier and that I picked up on is making sure that uh, you're kind of building your own personal brand and what you do and becoming the expert in the category you're, uh, that you're in. Um, how is that going? How are you, What's your plan on getting more speaking gigs and things like that? So, uh, you know, the market is huge uh, because the awareness is becoming more and more 
everybody is aware what yeah. good quality sleep does. So it's a, it's a growing business. So my practice has increased like tremendously. Even today, I have to change and run over here because of the schedule. And you know, patients are finding me online, and so the regular, you know, the primary care physicians know the impact good sleep has on various body organs. So there is a huge need. It's a it's an under tapped industry. Everybody needs to sleep. Yeah, and there are not many people teaching or coaching, you know, people how to sleep. Mm-hmm. Everybody picks on bad habits. To Thirty years later, they say I can't sleep. So if you can learn a few things early on in your life, then you can have a lifelong, um, you know, good. Sleep You're getting hygiene. ahead of it. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like, why wouldn't you want to sleep better? Yeah, and there's nobody uh, out there promoting it. So. That's my next plan of action to get in front of more people to help them to uh, sleep better. So how, how, what's the plan for that? You know, is it through Instagram, doing little uh, pieces of content to put out that talk about different, uh, you know, elements and benefits of better sleep and how to get it and that kind of thing? Yes. So, you know, I, I have zero social media experience. Or I don't have any done i had mm. you know i started my practice last year so i have to have that brick and mortar practice for and then the aim is to spread the word around so that's my next goal for this year and next year so i'm beginning to uh, work on it go back and look at, this is a guy i champion all the time on the podcast his name is gary vaynerchuk now don't look at what he's doing now because what he's doing now is at scale it's off the charts the mm-hmm. amount of content he's putting putting out Go back to 06, 07, 08. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was working for his dad at that time, uh, and he worked. They they did. Um, he they owned a liquor store in New Jersey, but they focused and became experts at wine. So, I think they rebranded around that time uh, to calling it Wine Library, mm-hmm. and it still exists to this day as that form. Uh, but he would do these, you know, grainy camcorder videos. And he even admits, he says, it looks like I was being held hostage. You know, that's how it looks with the really pale background. And he would just sit there and drink wines and do uh, very authentic, real reviews on them. You know, even, even, even if it was something that they carried in the store, if it tasted like somebody rubbed a baseball glove in the mud and then threw some pine needles on it or whatever, that's how he would describe it. It didn't matter if he was in a store and he was trying to champion it. He would give real reviews of the wine. Maybe something like that. Not wine reviewing, yeah. but maybe sleep product reviews. Um, five, you know, all the different uh, checklist type of headlines. You know, five ways to get better sleep. Something like that. You know, and th- a lot of those things can come out of podcasting. Correct. So maybe you need a podcast. So this is my first podcasting experience so that's why when i met first of many yes so i thought i'll come and try it out yeah Yeah. sorry it's uh letting you down (laughs) (laughs) sorry it had to be this one (laughs) yeah this time and place for everything jim (laughs) it's fun we try to have a good time so with people looking at after you and uh if your social media game is somewhat on board what's a good place to people for people to follow you i started off with my website so uh, www.sleepwellnessinfo.com mm-hmm. or they can google my name Bijoy John MD so that's the first inlet to my practice so why don't you come up with a handle like you know the sleep guru or the sleep slayer something like that you know? I mean you know, it's still a medical practice so you can't be extra, you know extravagant <laughs> extraordinary in, in those kind of you know uh, what you verbiage. need to do mm-hmm do what uh, Dr. Pimple Popper. Figure out how you can do what she does. Like, you know, people, the worst snorer compilation type stuff. You know, people do a sleep study. Right. You know, maybe we make music out of people snoring or something like that. Yeah. People do bring their recordings all the time about how loud their snoring is. The snoring competition. Like if you were to listen back to it and give your honest review... And you say, okay, they stop, they stop breathing right about here, and you have a countdown a timer that counts up. And then finally you hear them, yes. you know, maybe 20 seconds have gone by. And, be like, and you're like, okay, right now he's doing this, and this is what this means, and this is why he needs to have this, this, and this. You see what I'm saying? Correct. Maybe you do, you know, reaction videos. 
Correct. So that could really get you a lot of attention, I think. Yes. We try to be creative here. Yes, no? that's the ultimate goal. <laughs> Such an undertapped industry, and every it, it's universal. Everybody needs it. Yeah, it's the one state that makes the pauper and the king the same, right? Everybody yeah. needs sleep. That's right. And 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 the and the lower you are, or you know, the guy on the street actually sleeps better than the guy owning a multi-million dollar mansion. That's true. So, Less stress. Yes. Well, there you go. Link will be in the description where you can get in contact with Mr. Dr. John Bijoy, Bijoy John, and uh, the sleep guru, the sleep slayer. We'll call him the sleep doctor. I mean, look for these things. Why not have a moniker like that, right? Yes. So you're welcome. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll check in on that as well. And uh, please... Uh, if you can go to what's your problem podcast.com, check us out, follow along, all that good stuff and uh, give us a rating. If there's anybody you think we need to have on, let me know. I'm reachable through that website. What's your problem podcast.com again, Dr. Bajoy John, thank you for coming on, sir. Thank you. The Tim. sleep slayer. Yes. Sleep, do- sleep guru. How many other things can we think of? The, the, the slayer of the sleepazoids. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> right on brother. Thank you. Thank you.